Let me go ahead. And... Here's for somebody. So where is the Allen County Court page? Um, go to Town Cloud. Oh, if you go to, well, if you, it should be on our calendar under a link too. She sets it in court. the calendar. Um, go to meeting uh, agendas and. <laughs> Click that link and see if it's still if it's active for this. Um, yeah. oh, oh, it's good. Just click it. There you go. Oh, it's live. Yeah. It should prompt me to let people in, doesn't it? Uh, meeting passcode it's asking for. Okay. So then you have to off the agenda. Uh, oh, okay. It's like a six digit. So, unfortunately, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Is it up? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that link's good. Mm -hmm. Issue solved. That's Thank you, Jeremy. No, but if we just use the same template, but it does generate our same link. So, yeah, so we don't have to change things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. The was like two, yeah, two hundred fifty dollars. That's probably worth. When I first got it, first got it in January. I was like, "Who's this?" Yeah, but you know, it's just an abbreviation. Yeah. Okay. Well, Korea means what? <laughs> I did attend their meeting the other day. I got a call from. Uh, um, uh, GEO PC mm -hmm. to be on their board. So, and I missed the meeting yesterday morning. And by the time she called me, it was after the meeting, so I missed it. Oh, it was yesterday? Mm -hmm. So is that a board that he had been yes. serving on? Mm -hmm. then, okay, that was one I wasn't, didn't have on my radar. <laughs> I think it was on that list I made, in, but who knows? So who's our um, point of contact from that entity? Susan Christensen. That's Susan's. Yeah, she's entity. the director. Of oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know if she was business Oregon or no. I know they. I get them all mixed up. I have to sit there. And go, okay, regional solutions Feather, does this. Business. Feather is is business Oregon, okay. and Susan is chief. Do you uh, have you met Feather before? She's phenomenal. Yeah, she's the very I, She's like the best person I've met in government. She's been on calls, but I don't, awesome. I don't think that I've met her. She's she's very professional, very can do, very knowledgeable and helpful. Plus, she's pleasant and fun. But I don't get her. She's got the whole thing going. going on.
Maybe I would pass you the front half of this if you want to start. Oh, thank you. What was the $613 from the ARPA fund recently that we spent? I can't remember. I know that it was- It, it was something to do with the uh, the Vonage uh, voice over IP phones. Right, and head, okay. Headsets or- Yeah, something. thank you. Okay, I knew it was something I'd heard, but I couldn't. Jeremy, is IT stuff, stuff Jeremy ordered. Okay, good. Morning. Morning. You want to sign in? Yeah, there. Oh, yeah. I'll go get one. Let me finish this packet. Carrie had some in a folder on the desk. Start bringing my blankets to this room. It's always so cold in here. Speak for yourself. <clears throat> Sweet, we need an air conditioner just on Patty. <laughs> Unlike you, too. <laughs> my principal. If, if you want to adjust it, I mean, you can try. I don't touch things like that. <laughs> You know what the joke downstairs is, no is <laughs> when it says it's not what it's doing at any given time downstairs, a uh, weed department us will like, Even you turn it down turn it on, and then you it wait a few and minutes stops, and it's, never and it's at the right coming hotter and then you turn it off and it seems like it stops and you go to the bathroom and come back. It's on again. It's like, Lord have mercy. Yeah. Unless you shut the door to the room, it doesn't regulate well. It just has this constant flux in here. And so it's blowing and it should be warm, but it's not. And I don't Because mind. it just keeps blowing. <laughs> it's in is on auto and then it's set for 72, but at the moment it's 70 degrees. That's what it's saying. Yeah. But like you say, it just it blows yeah. so much when we have the door open that it yeah. doesn't do a good job yeah. <laughs> doing its job. And downstairs, you know, in the conference room with the ceilings a lot lower, mm -hmm. there were a lot of people there. So that's a the lower ceiling. Is good help. That's just for you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with my age. It's been yeah. this way my whole <laughs> <laughs> I told these guys before, but when I was in the Marine Corps and we were doing some cold weather training, they actually the the corpsman came and checked some of the folks to see to see if they were hypothermic or maybe getting frostbite or whatever. And they took some them away and they checked me and they go, "Oh, she's fine." <laughs> and they kept going.
So that's the rest of it. So the I got a sign in sheet out there. If you, I'll just, oh. you sign in and then I'll put it back up. And now finding parking today is the premium out there. Yeah. <laughs> There's like no parking. Is there a trial? There's a help. Um, Lottie's meeting downstairs. LPSCC. Yes. We you. just came out of. Yeah. But I got here kind of early today, and there were still quite a few cars around. When I pulled up, there was like about eight, eight, two eight, parking eight. spots, and I took one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right on the front side. Sorry, I can't remember. And over here we have a non departmental 911 emergency, and then you have a 911 emergency. 
Why did they all not just come out of that one? Well, this 911 supply is a company. That's a company where they buy law enforcement equipment from it. So it wasn't necessarily specific. I mean, one, no, one, what it was, was just, uh, it was, may have been capstone, it may have been a duty belt, it may have been. So in this, where it says 911 emergency, do we usually charge it to non departmental instead of just 911 emergency? Yeah, because it, it, it's dealing with, I believe, because it's dealing with uh, employee payroll. So we don't take any payroll out of this. Well, they do, but this is, um, I can pay the, this is that new 1% or 0 0.01 or whatever fee. Mm -hmm. So it goes to a different place and it's probably it, it, for, for their contract. That may be negotiated, then we pay it. Yeah. That's why it's coming out of my department. I don't have to probably buy it up to look into it, but that's what it'd be my. I wouldn't mind just double checking to make sure we didn't, you know, just historically charge it to there, but it should have been perhaps coming out of there mm -hmm. if we're taking other employee well, stuff from, from again, this, then this would probably be more appropriate to also be. Yeah. But again, it's going to be dependent on the contract. The contract yeah. It's already 10 30. Just so you know. Yeah, I can finish this. Yeah. All right, good morning, everybody. Harney County Court is in session at 1032 on February 15th, 2023. Find me in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item, agenda approval. I don't have any changes to the agenda. Well, then I move to approve the agenda. I'll second. A motion to approve agenda has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And then next item, minutes approval from previous county court meeting on February 1st, 2023. I move to approve the Harney County Court meeting minutes of February 1st, 2023. Second. And a motion to approve Harney County Court meetings from February 1st, 2023 has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion or opposed? And motion carried. And no old business. Several uh, public comment. Oh, I'll just go past that. I one. know. <laughs> yeah. We all yeah, have our things. All right. Our so, uh, ticks, right? Opportunity for public comment. Would anybody like to address it? Are we allowed to address the agenda? Yes. Uh, no. So I was told to come back to this meeting. Okay. Um, for HCOT, we had asked for some ARPA money, and I, I did send you a, um, I sent you all an email, did mm -hmm. you get it? Because mm -hmm. um, I misspoke, and I, I thought the money we got before was from ARPA, but it was from a state COVID grant from Business Oregon that it just passed through the county. Mm -hmm. and, the, you know. and those were the funds I was referencing, uh, just so you know, the, the funds that you referenced in the oh. email were the ones I was asking them about. Oh, okay. So that was correct, but oh. you spoke, it, you didn't misspeak on those. Oh, okay. Because yeah. those those were also federal dollars that had came through the state down to the county to be allocated. And the ARPA funds are similar. They were all federal dollars that came down. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Anyway, I, I was just wondering, can we put, can you put on the agenda then or can we talk about this? Um, well, and that, and I apologize, that was my oversight then for not putting you back on the agenda. I missed that. Um, in, in looking through the budget, uh, I'm not really finding anywhere um, to to uh, find any funds. I mean, we have we have the uh, well, ARPA funds are fairly well planned for for some major major things for the county uh, rather than small helps for for organizations. Um, so if there were other places in the budget which the judge tried to look through, I think, didn't you to see if there were lots yeah, and there. that's what they're looking through different different. Uh, Categories and and um, uh, the um, the term escapes me now. Um, there's a contingency contingency line, I believe, of sorts. It's supposed to be a, a fund for major things, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, then I might have to do some more looking into. I guess is kind of where I'm at. It. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to throw this card out there um, two months now, and I'm still kind of trying to figure some of this out. So um, in years past, and I think we spoke to it last time in years past in the budget, they had a specific line items for nonprofits. And then since 2019, they hadn't funded that those line items. Um, and I may wish to refrain from anything and then we'll discuss it during budget season this year and re and refund those line items potentially um but right now i'm not sure where where to pull any funds from for that purpose can i ask where the arpa funds are kind of earmarked for i know there was a yeah for that. rural broadband for the rural remote areas and all of the infrastructure and re-engineering and um establishment of professional services for broadband action team with a couple other counties and, and things like that it's fairly expensive and, and um in the last uh, meeting when you were when you were here um i had researched arpa funds and what uh, types of expenditures they could be used for and it it uh, doesn't authorize direct direct payment uh, or contributions for non nonprofits or small business there are provisions for grants or loans, low interest or no interest loans from the ARPA funds with internally for county, it's pretty broad. In, in, op, government operational expenses is pretty broad as to what we can use them for. But outside the county, then it starts to have outside of county uh, governmental expenditures, it becomes a little bit more restrictive. And, and, I, a bit more restrictive. and I wouldn't be surprised if it may end up also being I mean, we haven't discussed it per se, but like the Justice Center and the, the big projects that will, may have gaps that also uh, qualify under the ARPA definition. So, so let me let me do a little more looking though. I don't want to just completely tell you no today, but let me do some more looking. Um, I need to get with Treasurer Heaney and find out uh, some more education on my part and uh, look at uh, some different categories and see if there's something that we can do still. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm not I'm not saying no completely still at this point, but let me do some more research. All right, thank you. You bet. Any other public comment? Not seeing any. Then we'll move to old business. Um, and being no old business, we'll move on to new business. Um, First thing is some service awards. If I wanted to, um, I wanted to start memorializing these actually within the, the agenda and the minutes um, with actual yes. names on the agenda. Uh, but it's uh, for uh, 15 years of service, Roger Stamke. And um, in which department does he work in? He's the community, probation. yeah, community corrections, parole and probation. And Debbie Cronin from the road department for 10 years of service. Would you wanna take I'll it back to her? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. <clears throat> Next item, uh, resolution 2023-05, renaming general fund planning department 101-040 to planning and community development. I think 
Um, does this stem from the resolution that was done later last year, um, renaming? And this is just the actual. Wasn't it just? Was it this year no, or last no, year? No, was it last November, year? December. Yeah, oh, was it December okay. that we uh, started making this transition, and then this is the official renaming of the phone line. I didn't remember which. Uh, Res oh, amending. Yeah, it was last year. Um, so this yes, is an amendment of the. This is an did. amendment to that resolution. It says it in the upper left. Well, is this to address that? Okay. This is, is this to separate so this, the GIS? Yes. So this so this amendment uh, amending the uh, initial resolution or the original resolution is for uh, moving GIS department into a standalone department from the community planning department. It had been a standalone prior to the resolution that's being amended. And now after few more conversations it's been decided to pull it out Is yes correct yes nothing will change there will be no no budget changes no um, no other changes other than supervision um the department will fall under myself so other than that there's no other changes just removing it from that structure and being a standalone entity i don't have a problem with that okay i move to approve resolution 2023-05 in the matter of amending resolution 2022-29, renaming general fund planning department 101-040 to planning and community development. I second. A motion to approve resolution 2023-05 in the matter of amending resolution 2022-29, renaming general fund planning department 101-040 to planning and community development and realigning GIS department to a standalone department has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing any, motion carries. Next item on the agenda from under new business is resolution 2023-06, appropriation of funds to the building fund 213 and creating a new expenditure line. This entails This is that that money from um, the public, public health, health modernization, money. modernization money, and it allows them to receive it. They didn't have a receiving line for it oh, to okay, track okay, it, and so this creates that fund line to track it from. Okay, which is what we had a brief discussion on at the last county. Court. And the MOU is later on the agenda. Yeah, the yeah. So whereas the plans. All right, that's just creating a revenue line for those funds to come in. Mm -hmm. So um, I would move to approve resolution number 2023-06 in the matter of appropriating funds due to the unexpected occurrence or condition in regard to building fund 213 and creating a new materials and supply expenditure line. And the details are there for the $14,750 and the lines that would be um, filled in. It would be, they would receive revenue of $14,750 and they have 
three different expenditure lines that allocated that total that same amount. So yes, the, the revenue is uh, totaling three hundred and twenty-seven thousand nine hundred and twenty-five dollars, an increase of fourteen thousand seven hundred and fifty. Right. And personal services increase of 6,250 materials and supplies increase of 5,000 and a reimbursed items line increase of 3,500. Right. I'm so moved. Second. Uh, a motion to approve resolution 2023-06 in the matter of appropriating funds due to unexpected occurrence or condition in regard to building fund 213 and creating a new material and supply expenditure line with the amounts previously specified has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Sorry. And aye. Stop opposed. An email. <clears throat> Not hearing any opposed, motion carries. Would we want to move item J up so that Mr. Roy wouldn't have to wait too long? <laughs> we have quite a few things prior to him. Um, um, yes, we'll move item J up to the next item. Uh, Richard and Rick Roy had requested um, to be on the agenda. Uh, representing Steens Mountain Brewery and requesting letter of support for grant purposes. The letter he gave to me already. This is uh, Main Street Task Force letter from the... Uh, so this is uh, outlines the yeah, yes, Judge. Um, thank you. Um, so that letter uh, is the identification from the Burns Main Street Task Force to the Oregon Main Street organization, which is run through Oregon Parks and Recreation Department, that the Whittier Building is the selected project for this year. And so what I came in for yesterday was to get a letter of support and um, it kind of has to follow along with some of the things identified that they're, you got to use the right verbs, right terms. And so it's not, um, we think it's a good project, so yes, give them the money. That's really not what it <laughs> um, There are certain things, you know, urban blight, abandoned buildings, repurposing purposing buildings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, you said I, I own Steens Mount Room, my wife and I, I do. Uh, we purchased uh, the Whittier um, in May with the idea that we would uh, put the pub on the first floor, pub restaurant on the first floor, and the second floor, uh, there's seven hotel rooms. And we're going to refurbish those, reopen those. Um, one of the things that um, we're going to do is make them at least a couple of rooms available for wildland firefighters. Um, I retired recently, retired from BLM, and one of the problems we have with the in, in the zone, the interagency fire zone, is bringing we can't get any housing. So we would set some aside for for them. Um, also, visiting hospital staff, and then we would make a couple of rooms available just for travelers. This is, and it would be. Short term rentals, more like a month to month type thing than, um, you know, year one um, or longer. Um, there's there's no kitchenettes or anything in those rooms, but that's that's the project we're going through and currently going through the the grant process for for that building. There. And uh, if you there's one existing picture of that building when it was first constructed back in '39, uh, it wasn't a pink stucco building. Actually, stone building. So we, we would remove the the uh, Pepto Bismol <laughs> <laughs> and then go back to that stone um, and try to restore it to its 
original condition. So that's what we're working on right now. And I think it would be good for the community because the first thing you see coming into town is that pink building. And the last thing you see is that pink building. I know. And we changed that to stay. It sounds good. I have a couple of questions, just not related necessarily to your letter, but so will the Burns Urban Renewal Agency, will they be helping you in any way? Or are you going to be able to connect with them? For we, I already did. Okay. Um, and so we were approved that way. So <laughs> when we're complete and the county does its assess, assessment, when it's done, uh, then we'll get that tax rebate on that, that one-time tax rebate. But, you know, in the long term, the value of that property will, when we're done is going to be significantly higher than what it is now. So, you know, there's, there's that too, plus um, hopefully, you know, we have people from all over the world that have stopped in at since not for We have a map of pins. And the only continent we don't have anyone from is well, Antarctica. Um, <laughs> but we've had people from all over the world come. Um, then COVID hit and that kind of changed things. But people would be amazed at where people come from that are coming through this area. And when we were seeing Mount Ruin, we had a lot of people come in and visit. I imagine we'll have the same same thing um, now that things have opened up and people start traveling. And so, um, are, are you having any uh, challenges in getting the contractors you need to do the work, or is that yet to come? I, I ask this. I'm, I'm on the construction contractors board at the state level, and I just like it, to it, stay in touch with if you if you have enough licensed licensed um, that, that is people. An issue. Yeah. Um, and and OPRD understands, and so. Um, for rural, not just here, but rural Oregon, uh, it does have a, an issue with, with finding enough licensed contractors. Uh, I've already had a couple of them. They thank you very much, but I can't. I can't get the I can't get the help. Um, I'm too busy. But the big one is I can't get help. Um, so what OPRD has done is. I don't necessarily need to have three bids. Okay. Um, but if I reach out to three and two of them say, um, I can't do it, but one says I can do it, that's good enough. Okay. That's it, good. It's what they've had to do to help rural Oregon. And, you know, folks in Bend or wherever else, or they're busy over there too. So that, but that is going to be an issue. Um, not only for here, but for my project, but any project. Um, and then, some time in the past, we've had we've had challenges on historic buildings and the the um, commercial inspection uh, approvals that are done at the state, right? Because for a lot of that, that's where we need to go for that. But our planning department, you know, hopefully is helpful to you in trying to help you facilitate that. And if you ever run into really big showstoppers, let us know, because sometimes it's it's required intervention of the county court and even our state reps to open that dialogue. Yes, they've been very helpful. Um, there's also, um, I, I guess, the some of the stuff is open to interpretation, <laughs> right? Because it's not that necessarily that cut and dry. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're dealing with an older building. Um, you know, it wasn't built in 2020, so things are not going to meet some of those codes. But um, if we run into any issues, that we throw it to stop it. You look like a man of patience. It should be fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if the Court is uh, in agreement. I will draft a letter in support of um, and bring it before next court for signatures. That is, that, is that soon enough? Do you, yeah. Do you have a timeline? It'll be two March weeks. 1st. March first. Uh, that should make it. Yes. I, I have to have everything printed in by I think the sixteenth of March. 
Thank you. Thank you. I know ORDS is the same way. They have a, it, when people pass through signing, they've had that for, book for years, the ledger, and it's just all over the world. All over the world, people come and play. Billy Idol came here to have his daughter write a horse. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah. 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 That's funny. <laughs> In the 1980s, uh, any any other discussion on this topic of letter of support for Steens Mountain uh, Brewery for grant purposes? No, appreciate you coming to the court with us. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. And then back to normal. Agenda items. Next item is resolution 2023-07, interfund transfer with categories for general fund emergency disaster 101-022. Transfer of appropriations within categories for general fund emergency disaster 101. Uh, there was a renegotiation from when Paul was emergency manager and now that slipped through the cracks. Is that what we're saying? And right. Well, on, on rent. Yes. Just, and it's just moving the rent, the excess rent to materials and supplies. And that was during the budget crisis. The emergency manager department was able to put some extra funding in, in the rent aspect um, for one of the other buildings. And we're not using that anymore. And so I was told just, you know, just don't pay it, but I didn't realize there was a resolution required. So here we are. And that happened so last year after the budget was approved. So we're just redistributing funds from a line item where they won't be used to a line item where they can be used. Correct. Which is a decrease from the administration line of $8,900 and an increase in the materials and supplies line by the same amount, $8,900. Right. So was the, the rental uh, done to an outside entity? Is that your, yeah, it was your within department? The court. It was for the search and rescue yard. But is the yard um, a county facility? Uh, it's owned by the county, yeah. I think it's actually owned by the sheriff's office. I don't know. An know emergency it. management doesn't really have anything over there anymore? No, there's the public health container that's there. Um, it was originally put under emergency management, so the rent from that container was put there. It's all PPE and excess furniture from public health. And so the container was paid for out of COVID funds when COVID first spun up, and um, emergency management volunteered at that time to pay the rent, to pay some rent on that space. Um, so you it, were paying it to the sheriff's department? or No, I was paying it to the county. Okay. It was through the county. And it's just like my office rent. So it was just, here's rent for the office and here's rent for the SAR yard, that kind of thing. So do you have uh, responsibility for the SAR yard as... No. In any way, that's the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office, okay. Search and okay. rescue falls under well, and Felix has the wood cutting down there, and they did take parole information people down there to cut wood and stack and do all of those other things that um, that department does community corrections. Are, are these funds, are these um, original general fund funds that were, or did they come in through, uh, they OEM? Come in through OEM? Yes. They came in through OEM to yes. the general fund and then were budgeted to these line items. Correct. So I guess my question would be the SAR yard, is that county property that a department would be paying rent on in whoever, you know, or not? I know most count most departments pay some, you know, rent on at least in the budget, you know. Or in the, in or the is it under an outside, administration outside? Yeah, of, like what? Like, you know, like where where she's funded through an outside grant, right? That's why they do OSU. You know, is 
uh, some county contribution, but then it's um, water you know, master pays rent. The, a water master pays rent. OSU. But typically, our departments don't I, rent. Elected officials, they, the assessor's office and the clerk's office. DA's office. DA's office. You know, there's certain ones that we have this kind of in kind situation going on with. Them. I don't know the answer. I was just putting it up because for clarification. It's a conversation to be had. Yeah. It. Um, <laughs> our where, budget board members you, getting some yeah. air over there. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Where do other counties house their emergency management? Do they count it in, house them in county facilities? And are they paying rent for theirs? Do you know? Most of them don't pay rent. Um, I'm one of the few that actually does. Um, some of them have specific emergency management buildings. Um, some of them just have offices. And then some of them are under the sheriff's office. So it's a half-time deputy and a half-time emergency manager. Mm -hmm. um, I think the county has just always charged emergency management rent. And so we just kept doing that. Well, the, I can see the purpose at this point in time right now for moving it from a fund or a line where it's not going to be used for that purpose and moving it into a line where it can be used. So I'm, I'm okay with that, but I think think this is a topic for further discussion and Correct. exploration. Yeah, because if we're, if we're moving funds that we're saying we're going to be expended in one place, where are we then expending those funds is what this question needs to be. Right. So it's just, and when I did my budget with OEM, um, knowing that I was told I didn't have to pay that anymore. So you I did not write those, that into, what? you didn't write the rent into your budget. I didn't write that much rent. So I had taken off that side and moved it to elsewhere in my budget. And that's what I had submitted to OEM. But it was still on the county budget line. And so it, it didn't get corrected during the it budget didn't get process. Corrected. Yeah, because it was after it, this conversation came after the budget process. And Bobby Joe was aware of it. We just hadn't done all of that stuff. And I didn't understand the process on how this works. So I just assumed that it would just be moved. And then so there's there's still program funds. There's funds that are still being used oh, yes. for the program. But the only concern would be if if we receive these funds in anticipation that we're going to use them for rent, and then we don't use them for rent, is there going to be issues with that? No, because when I submitted my budget to OEM at the for this fiscal year. I had taken that out there. She so thought it was already done. This I thought to it was already it... done because it was just the county judge saying, yes, you don't have to do that. And I'm like, okay. So I, I reallocated the fund throughout my budget. And then we're at this point. And so now we're just making the correction, the formal correction. Okay. But uh, I guess to take one step back, what you had been budgeting on was a smaller budget because some of that was 8900 was devoted to rent so yes uh, where are you now uh, putting those funds material and supplies material well well, well I'm, I'm saying what am I using them what are you um now that we've changed kind of the scope since we're not just doing we're not just focused holistically on just emergency management we're using it for community outreach for doing the fairs, we're doing all of the outreach, we're doing for the CWPP, we're allocating, allocating into other programs under emergency management. Whether it's, um, well, now they're changing the training rules and we have to be certified, so there's going to be additional training there, but there wasn't any extra put in that. It all went to materials and supplies in, in my budget because we were doing a lot more community outreach. Uh, this is off topic, but I just want to ask you, what is the status of countywide emergency texts and emails and notifications for the county? Are we on one system now? Or are we still doing? Some? We are on one system for the county, for the community, for the population of Harney County. 
Um, the other system, the alert sense system, was paid for. Now it's being paid for out of the sheriff's office, and they paid it this past time around. Um, and that is because it's used primarily by law enforcement, um, search and rescue. Um, it's used more for the professional side of it. Um, it's a more secure system. You can't accidentally send a warrant request out through to the public using the private system. So alert sense is still being used. We still use it for search and rescue. Um, we still use it. The hospital um, has a section in there for hospital surge. Um, the alignment forest service and Mount here refuge um, is used for that if they have to do an evacuation or in an internal emergency. So I guess countywide it's used for internal. Alert senses. Alert senses. I mean, I used to be on alert sense. I don't know if I well got because dropped, you used to be like the wolf committee. Yes. Yeah. So all of that was moved over to Everbridge, and so now when you sign now when you, as a community if you sign in with an account, you can check off what weather alerts you want to receive, and if you want to receive the work the wolf alerts, you just click that button. I'd like some of the outreach you do to really capture people's give them the opportunity to know easily to sign up and get into that system in case we have a community-wide emergency and need, you know, that's not for the alert sense population, but for everybody else, because I don't know how many people are actually on it or signed up, but if you can use some of that money to make it a continual all year long outreach that, yes. you know, and make this work. And well. we just had little cards made up that gives the website address. And then on the back, if you've got to create a login and a password and a lot of people forget it. So I know people who have like two or three of those accounts because they couldn't remember what password they used. <laughs> but also um, we're doing some outreach that's coming up. We'll have some events here in town. And for people with access and functional needs or the elderly who need to see something bigger, we're actually, we just ordered postcards for that. That'll be bigger. They can put it on the refrigerator. But should it be a, a significant disasters type emergency, It'll go out as a WIA alert, which is like an Amber alert. Anybody who is connected to a cell tower within Harney County will get that message, whether you're signed up or not. Okay. So those types of alerts, evacuation, emergencies, that kind of thing, if it's just Druzy or just fields, just one population, we can create a polygon. And even if you're just a hunter or camping down there, you will get the alert to evacuate. Um, so having to sign up is just if you want the extras the NOAA weather alerts and advisories, and you can pick and choose whatever you want. You have to, once you create an account and register your your cell number or whatever, do you have to log in every time to get those? Or once you've registered, you're just gonna start getting them? Once you register, it'll come through. If you registered it as a text message, a home phone or an email, and you can select them all if you want, you'll get the alerts all of that way. Um, as long as you answer the phone, that's good. If they send you a text message, though, it'll say, please respond yes. And it'll note because if you don't respond, it wants to make sure that you got it. So five minutes later, it'll send you another. So, yeah. And, and then one last question. Wasn't one of these programs funded by the state? Or are we paying for both of them? Yeah. Um, so emergency management as a whole? No, the oh, alert Everbridge. sends to the Everbridge. Oh, yeah. Everbridge is paid for by the state, 100%. We decided to keep alert sense just because it's for internal alerts and that we don't want to accidentally get sent to the public. And it's we're very easy to do that. And we're paying for that. The and that's in the sheriff's, sheriff's budget? It's, it, it came out of, uh, I believe, the 911 budget this year. But it had been coming from your budget. It right. had been coming. From and do you know what that budget. amount was? 30, it was. It used to be like $2,800. It went up to thirty one, and I think this year it went up to $3,400. A year? Yeah. But if we have that amount plus this amount that are no longer coming out of your budget, that's where I'm just like from, you know, 2020 or 2019, what your budget was. And then we have these this amount that's no longer coming out in rent and we have the alert sense. Right. I think I would like you to sit down with your supervisor and make sure he knows where you've been allocating funds prior to where we are now, yes. just so that he's aware of where you're putting your resources into where we weren't putting them into. Right. Well, like, you know, I would, the, the uh, alert sense fee, it's up to 3,400. It was 30, what'd you say it was last time it was in here? 
30, um, 31 the year prior. And so, then that's 20, 20, so that line shouldn't have been populated in budget, shouldn't have been populated for you this year. Should be, is it zeroed out this year? Because uh, what, no, what we did was I initially paid it when the contract came in, and then um, the sheriff's office repaid it back into my budget. Okay, so next year, though, this coming budget, it will go straight to them. Yeah. But does that leave you with funds that don't have a uh, allocation for? No, that was just, so I get a flat amount from the state, and then the county matches that amount, and it's 62.5 every year. Um, we have been getting a population bump, but previously that hadn't been added to the budget. And so I don't spend those funds. I can't spend those funds. So that, you know, the extra 2,800 and some change that we would have gotten this year, I'm not getting. And the county doesn't have to match anything of that. So it just moved back into materials and supplies. It's just um, increased revenue above what, what the, the budgeted uh, Correct. Um, amount was. Correct. And we can sit down and go over that and I can show you what the actual budget that I submit to OEM looks like. When I take that amount every year, um, the 62.5 from the county and the 62.5 from the state, that equals you know one flat amount. And then I have to divide that up between my salary, materials and supplies, travel, trainings, all of those things. Well, um, did you get your budget worksheet? Yes, I have that now, and I have corrections not being made on it. Okay. Because it just carried, it's the same as it was last year, so there are corrections that need to be made in advance of this year's budget, and we'll get it squared away this time. So next, um, towards the end of the month, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I've got to go to Salem tomorrow, but towards the end of the month, I'm going to start scheduling with department heads, and we'll have those discussions then. Absolutely. So, so a, a motion for resolution 2023-0. Dash zero seven. I make a motion for resolution 2023-07 in the matter of interfund transfer of appropriations within categories for general fund emergency slash disaster 101-022 uh, and decrease in administration of 8,900 and an increase in materials and supplies of 8,900. I second. A motion has been made to Approve resolution 2023-07 in the matter of interfund transfer of appropriations within categories for general fund emergency slash disaster 101-022 of a decrease in 8,900 from administration, $8,900 from administration and an increase of $8,900 in materials and supplies. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Not hearing any, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, it settles. Next item is uh, on the agenda is an application for approval for a location of telephone conduit buried cable paralleling, paralleling or crossing county roads from Morello Construction for Charter Communications. These are just like the pile that we approved um, going out to Crane along the Highway 78 last time. Last time, and then this one is going across the Law Road. So yeah, I saw that they were going to bury it length. instead of it, it said something about the overhead wasn't. Working out, yeah. Basically, yeah. there were so, issues, yes. So they're going to bury it, yep. okay. But this is a different company than yes, a it is. company going down yep. Highway Seventy. Yep. So um, again, last time I don't know is we really had to make a motion on this. It was just for our signatures, I believe. Or did we have to make? <laughs> yeah, approval? well, it application for a... approval. So yeah. let's approve it, I guess. Okay. I mean, so you approved it. Yes. You yes, know, and, yeah. and perhaps you have, and then we're just county court review and approval. It says necessary, yes, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, it just has uh, signatures for our for our review and approval. We have to, a, a motion? Well, I move to approve. Okay. I'll second. <laughs> a motion has been made to approve 
application for approval for land location of telephone conduit and buried cable paralleling across in county roads by a Morello construction for charter communications on the logging road? Yes. You said? Yep. Okay. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? <laughs> not hearing any, not hearing, hearing none. Uh, motion carries. Eric, do you remember a time when the county court didn't approve something like this that you had recommended for approval? What kind of thing? Yeah, really. Consideration I mean, again, and that's what I basically tell any of the applicants that are putting in is that you know I'll take a look at it um, visually, whether it's a you know a road approach or whatever it may be that's basically affecting the the county road, and I'll take a look at it, and if I feel like it's unsafe or whatever, typically I can get with them and work out something different, say it's an approach on a hill, a corner, try to figure out another way so it's a little bit safer um, and and then go from there, but no. Thank you. Next item's on the agenda. Um, well, first off, Eric, do you need that back for your records? Yeah, so I was just gonna basically tell Tammy once it gets, cause I think it gets recorded mm -hmm. and then she can just scan it to me and then I'll pass it on. Okay, I was gonna say, or I'll throw a copy in your box or something. Okay, yeah, either way. Um, next item on the agenda, High Desert Partnership and Harney County Health Department MOU regarding community strengths, community strategies. Uh, to build and sustain Harney County Foundation foundational capability for community health. So these have already been signed by the um, the health department and the respective organization that they're dealing with. But again, it's something that I just wanted to have on the agenda to memorialize and have it recorded. It's documented. Yeah, it is documented. And and my question would be, um, so there's three of them, and one is going to go to. Um, do the um, underground, um, what, what is it that Jesse does? The planning department, the as environmental, as, health. The environmental, environmental health. health. One is gonna go to High Desert Partnership to hopefully address some type of smoke management related issues. And then one, what was the third one? Um, the parks and Rec. Parks. parks and Rec. And so, and according to the agreement, you know, it is, they're providing these amounts of funding, um, through June of this year, and then additional funding available based on budget approval by OHA through 2025. They mean approval by OHA? Yes, yeah, so they have to submit a new health modernization plan that goes to 2025. And so in the previous one, there was the VISTA grant uh, individual written into that, and that was just for a one-year term. So that'll no longer be to the in the 2025 plan. And so they'll be looking at making sure that the funds that are available to the county um, have allocations for those funds. Are the, so does the plan come to us to see the plan? No, because as I'm reading this, I'm like, I would like the county court to have some input into their decisions on where to put these funds. You know, uh, there's quite a big chunk going to High Desert Partnership, and I used to be quite involved in the smoke management discussions five years ago, which were didn't there wasn't much to it, um, and yes, and basically they'll, they'll they'll turn in four quarterly reports to show that it was discussed or that they convened a certain meeting around it, and that, that's a lot of money, and that's okay, maybe I'd like to hear more. It didn't sound like a whole lot for twenty five thousand. Well, and when not when we support the work of the collaborative that's working on that. Well, I like to hear how they're how much they're working on that and what their outcomes are, basically. And we can ask them to come and brief us on it. But I, I would like not to be locked in necessarily to that necessarily is gonna they will always count on getting that amount of money. We may have other needs at times uh, that relate to public health and community partners that we may want to shift. So is this just an annual? Or, or does this does this obligate this for several years or for the duration it's, of the plan? It says through 2020. June. Additional funding available based on budget approval by OHA. Yeah, they have to turn in the new 2023 to 25 budget, July of 23 to June of 25 budget request. So, so how that's often, where you want to have. I input. want to have input is every year, just yeah. like 
But let's go and keep going. Or yeah. let's let's. So it's over a two year period. So it's not a an annual review. Yeah. They can make certain modifications, uh, like what uh, Kelly was able to do with this. Some of these MOUs, uh, she went back and looked at what was proposed. And some of the previous health department directors had not allocated the funds uh, in a way that they would be utilized. And so she's gone back, right. had discussions with OHA and said, uh, here's some uh, modifications to this budget that we'd like to make. They've since approved them. And that's why these MOUs are right. coming about is so that we make sure that those dollars that were assigned to our county are going to be utilized within our county. Right. I just want them to be very much tied to but public that's where health. I don't. I personally, I I don't know if you want to have a work session with them to discuss it, or if you want to just. Talk I mean, I'm to them okay for this through June, but I'm just saying. But we haven't. There's some never ideas been involved that that so, started to come forward. So, that, so these funds right now, as it states in this, is is through 2023. June. The additional sentence there that additional funding available based on budget approval by OHA through 2025. So so these these amounts. Could change. They, could we say as as uh, approved or concurred by the county court or something? Just something where we have at least the ability to say sounds good, sounds good. Or well, other county courts don't tend to approve. Um, I'm, I'm just saying. No, no, please. This is, this other is counties, new. Go ahead. Other county courts don't tend They're, to be in direct approval of that. They work with their heart health department director. Um, now, sir, our health department directors haven't necessarily came to us with any of this. Um, Seeking input, right, say. right. I think I think in in the time to come, we will be more active as our local public health authority in connecting with our public health and health departments, and that may resolve everything. It's not like something's unresolved. I'm just saying this is okay, but you know, yeah, uh, I, if there's going to be regular funding, and if we as a community are, are seeing maybe that the needs might need to be a little different than this in the years to come. I'd like to make sure we have that. I would definitely flexible. I would definitely agree it's room for discussion. This deals with what we have right now for the remainder of this year. Yes. Um, but at the same time, these funds are kind of a different animal because they're OHA funds, they're not general funds. They don't co-mingle with our general funds in yeah, any way. Like county funds, correct. So, so in, in having the department head, uh, whether it's through the I, um, RHC and the uh, public health, allowing them to enter into these kind of agreements when they have funding that's earmarked for it from the state, uh, I think is is okay. My intent here, and I, we can have more discussion. I'm fine. I don't no, have any problem. this is new. But what I want to hear. But again, what I'm want to do here is just to memorialize these MOUs so that they're on record. I yeah, agree. this is a great way for the public to be able to access it, look at it, know what is going on, um, because otherwise uh, it's harder for them to to be able to view. Well, I think in a way, just just having these on the agenda serves as an outreach portion okay. of it as well. Anyway, knowing that, that how we're Can engaging with partners in the community. Good. Well, I won't. So there's there's three of them. There's yep. the uh, Parks and Rec, which I believe you have there. This one is uh, between the health department and uh, community development, Harney County Community Development. Um, this is the High Desert Partnership one. That's the High yeah, Desert yeah, Partnership yeah, one. Yeah. What are the amounts for the others? Five thousand dollars for Parks and Rec. $25,000 for High Desert Partnership. And what is the last one? Um, it's uh, Harney County Health Department, Harney County Community Development, which is, is that- 12,750 for our um, environmental health uh, oh, part oh, of I our know. planning okay. department. The that Former planning. Community, department. former planning, okay. <laughs> We're still yeah. <laughs> getting used to the terms. New term. Um, okay, so yeah, with the planning department, and that's the element where where environmental health comes in, right? Correct. Right. Right. Environmental right. health with the staff so that, to provide those services. And that water goes water. Twelve thousand seven hundred fifty to be used to provide funding in the amount of twelve thousand seven hundred fifty. And see, like, for example, again, not knowing any more than just 
this is, it'll probably all go for good across these, but let's say in the years to come with our water situation, more water testing, more this and that, that the state's funding program is not enough. We may end up wanting more to go there and maybe less well, here this was over the, time. Um, originally in the works, and so she got it in the works, uh, even this amount. Right, Yeah. but I don't know how much well, we'll we get in the years to come, utilized. but things shift, and I just want to make sure this wasn't like going to create a great expectation that it will always be there, yeah. that you have to do this. So, and then uh, the 12,750 amount on this one, just says development, the information necessary to meet its responsibilities under its grant agreement. And an additional 2000 for water testing program that includes you know, the purchase of testing, shipping, and test kits for residents of Harney County. Which is what Jesse spoke about last week. Mm -hmm. and, right. You know, and, and, I mean, Local public health authorities should have the flexibility, so we, you know, we should we should be involved in the early. Planning. My bigger concern with the public health modernization dollars is the conversations we've had at the EOCA level with the CBOs being able to take such a large portion of funds just by saying that they service our area. I went online and did a little homework on those of us those that designate Harney County as one of their oh. service counties. But when you get down in the weeds of it, there is nothing that makes these CBOs validate any um, any partnership with the county directly. And so I think really at the state level, um, I, I'm not as concerned about this because we will be able to see this. Our health department director can come to us. But those other dollars that are lingering out there that are assigned to our county that any CBO can, can latch, latch, on to. latch on to, and that needs fixed, and that is something we've got to really keep pushing. Were you at the we health solution? Were you at the Health and Human Services on online, uh, the AOC Health and Human Services Steering Committee? No, the I, one? That one was, was interesting. That was brought up. Commissioners said many things, and then this individual, I don't know which agency or, or state legislator, I think, you know, she was very aggressively pushing back and lecturing us on, um, you know, you'd have to prove all that. You'd have to prove that that's the case. I mean, I was I was astounded at her tone. You know, I'm just sitting here on Zoom going, you're not listening to us, apparently. You're not listening to us at all. And well, you have never been out on the east side of the state. That's apparent. And and she she just, she was like, like they're going to fight back not to change. So I hope our legislative process will work. But I know I was like, Whoa, I don't know listen to that in there yet to address it. That's the real issue. It's so, it's it is a major it is issue. I've heard it brought up in several different forums, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's a change to it somehow. I oh. hope so. If I, hope I so. haven't heard anything in the what, works. what I want is if they have the, general allocations in mind for the different counties, then the I think was it Rep. I want somebody has drafted something to begin to put some verbiage. It might just be a like beginning, a rough it. draft of a legislative concept or to basically say that the counties will be able to say, yes, the CBOs in our community are going to handle it or or most they'll handle most of it. And ours not, you know, let us let us be the touch point for our communities. No, they need to have an because with the many of them, services. those community based organizations, those nonprofits, some of them are are very big, um, you know, political supporters of the people they've elected in some of these these urban counties and there's you know a a relationship there that's just nothing we're dealing with down here at all and I'm glad but I don't want the fact that if we don't have very many CBOs that relate to public health and therefore they're just immediately going to skim off the top of what we would normally have gotten for our community and say well you, you only have one CBO, so you just get that. We can't have that happen or we're going to really be shortchanged. That's the concern. Well, thank you for this. And strategies was misspelled two different ways and is not correct on any of them. Just, just let her. It's E E G I S. And just, I, not a big deal. It's just it jumped out at me just because it was right at the top. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to. Uh, moving on. Next item. 
contract for first professional services between Perillo Law Firm Group, LLC, and Harney County for one year from February 1 until January 31st. Um, with uh, some of the topics that have come up uh, and because of change in leadership, I felt that it was time to refresh the contract, update the contract itself. It still had uh, verbiage in there from the previous law firm name on the previous contract and, and all it had been done in the past, which is, and it's within the contract, but just was just annual memos extending the contract. So I felt it was time to, uh, to update the contract. Thank you. I attached, or I believe I sent the, uh, the copy that had the uh, edited text in it. Yes, I appreciate that. Okay. That was helpful. So, um, so that's the edited ones that I sent you with the red text. Now I have a and question. Is it so? Are we going with one year contract? I think years ago it might have been a three year. The the previous contract, almost the same one as this, was a one year contract, and then it was just uh, renewed every year by. Because it never really came before us every year. But so the that's original what... one from twenty, I think it was 2020, 2021, was the last actual contract. And it was in its verbiage or in its contents uh, specified one year term. Okay. So I just stayed with the one year term on That's it. fine as long as it comes on the agenda every year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, it's if, if it's not, if it's annual and we never even, it's never on the agenda anymore. I'm not, not for that. But. Say what? He's saying, should we make this fiscal year contract instead of calendar year easier to fit in our budget? I don't well, know if I want to get into those weeds. It, it could be, you know, and we could do that next year. This this contract didn't increase uh, funding any or uh, amounts any prices costs didn't increase. So it would be it'll be okay to budget for it into 2023, but I agree potentially we could do a six month extension next year, which would get us in line with the budget cycle instead of the calendar cycle, and then that way if there were any increases, it would be easier to consider for budget purposes. It's just cleaner. Yeah, I, I agree. A lot of our contracts though that I've seen so far are on, on the calendar, calendar year. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I mean, if, if we're going to have, we're going to have any kind of an increase in our contract, then we got to know about it well in advance for, for budget purposes. So maybe this well, time of year is good. good. <laughs> well, that's where Bobby Joe also said that, you know, we've been budgeting so close to the bone that we need to make sure that as we budget, that we aren't doing that in, in sectors where we know that there is potential for increase. Let's make sure in the budgeting process that we assume and then we don't have to allocate those dollars if, or we do have to allocate it, but not spend it um, to make sure that we have that cushion built in so we aren't having to make resolutions for every so little thing. All the time. <laughs> and this would be one that I would, I would think it'd be a good idea to make some assumptions in the budgeting process, but continue to go with our contract. You know, it seems like last few years, all we've done is do tons of resolutions, tweaking and changing. But I think, I think that um, obviously, I, I think it's good to do that first of all, just to get it accurately lined out as the budget year. But I am hoping that, you know, since it's been a few years since we had our, had that budget crisis and disruption, that perhaps this coming year, once the budget set there might not be quite so many of these and that, that the departments will be able to understand you need to track it because I'm not just going to be coughing up more out of this fund or that fund to help you out unless it's really something unexpected. So I think, I think we're getting towards more um, stability in, in how we execute the budget. So with that in mind, uh, the contract has signature for all of us and uh, would entertain a motion then for. I move to approve our contract for professional services uh, between Harney County 
uh, political subdivision of the state of Oregon and Carrillo Law Group, LLC, law firm, a limited liability company registered in the state of Oregon. I second. It would be from February 1st, 2023 through January 31st, 2024. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Contract to make a Made a quick given that it says it's for a one year term. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, heard a motion for um, contract for personal services with the uh, professional, real, services. professional services. Between Carrillo Law Group and LLC and Arnie County, effective February 1st, 2023, for one year. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And I would just like to state for the record that I am very well pleased with uh, the services we are provided from this legal firm. They're very responsive and do a good job for the county. I agree. And I would, yes, would second that, third that. <laughs> Next item on the agenda, NRAC registration. Resignation of Jeff Maupin and two letters of interest. So uh, Jeff Maupin sent me an email saying that due to time constraints, he'd like to resign from the NRAC position that he was serving in. Uh, he had been uh, vacant from a lot of meetings, so it was coming. <laughs> uh, two letters of interest were submitted, one from Russ Clark and one from Tom Sharp. Um, Russ to serve in the livestock producer role that was open uh, due to Jeff's resignation. And then we had an open role for the uh, forestry side of uh, input and Tom Sharp uh, was willing to serve in that capacity. Um, not that he has a lot of background in that realm, but he is willing um, to serve in the role. We have had it open for over a year now. And so I will take any interested party that is willing to keep the board form and has good uh, ability to do homework and research. I think we're all familiar with Tom and his skills in he brings uh, a lot and bringing brings things lot to the table. To the table. And so I think that uh, uh, even though he doesn't have a necessarily a direct background in that area, I'm so comfortable with him serving in that position and, and trying to communicate with folks in that background um, that aren't quite comfortable with uh, attending the meetings directly. And will you be providing those letters of interest for the Yeah, record? one was an email and one was a, I think we a need to add and those put them in the in the record. I e even even if it's scribbled on a piece of paper we've well, always had to scan it, it but uh, I never made it in yet this week. So. I understand. <laughs> Thank um, you. So and uh, I'll also include the email from Jeff. That'd be great. But. So um on that topic somewhat, um, the, the letters of interest, has it always been the practice in these kind of nominations just uh, to take the recommendation from the board that they're coming from or to have the individuals before the county court? The practice has been most of the time that I've been on the court that the individuals, they didn't always show up, but Sometimes they did. Their letters were there. And then if there were a president of the fair board or a, you know, chair of a whatever, they might come also uh, or not. Sometimes be asked and they didn't want to be publicly weigh in if there was more than one applicant per seat. But I always wanted to hear if they said these are great people, but right now we really have a need for someone with the expertise in this area. And that's why, you know, if I had to recommend one, it would be this one. But your decision's fine. And then we would make that decision here publicly. Um, well, that's I, how it's been in usually. Myself, I I see kind of a a gap in appointing somebody that I haven't spoken to. And that's why I was asking if it was just taken upon the recommendation of the board that is 
put in fourth or if... and the board did put these two forward just for your information yeah. uh this is kind of a new way we've been doing it lately but it used to be they would come or we would have our discussion all looking at the letters all chatting uh if, if someone was the liaison and who said the president of the board do, do i spoke know? with the president so is that, um, I guess that's my question back to you. I'm I'm very familiar with both parties. I, no, I like the old process better though. You know them. If you will, I do. But I, I'd, I'd rather be able to see their letter of interest and then maybe ask a question if, you know, have the person present to be able to ask any clarifying questions or um, not, not no, especially if we had multiple applicants for letters of interest for a position. Yeah, if there's multiple applicants, I would. Um, but to stay consistent, I'd kind of rather stay with one process, even if it's only one applicant, to stay consistent. Um, their their little letters of interest are very simple. It doesn't like, matter. Say, I'm okay, going to the yeah. issue provide them, but um, just my thoughts. I I think uh, I'm comfortable uh, appro approving these people today, but I would like to go back to the old way. I, it also made them more comfortable having a little face-to-face -face with us, even if it's just sitting there and waving their hand and saying, I, I just care and I'm happy to serve or or I I can make all those meetings. That's one thing I could definitely, you know, it just gives us a better feel for who they are, even if we knew them. Does the NREC, I know the, I know the fair board does, but does the NREC have bylaws? Yes. Okay. So um, it could be something that, uh, that are added to the bylaws that you know interested parties would would appear before county court, or it's just a county court practice, whichever you want. Yeah, I think letters of interest are what it's probably mentioned in the bylaws. Okay. It's provided, and then those letters of interest are considered. So uh, there, you know, these these positions have you know very specific uh, terms associated with them. The one is livestock producer. The other is forest interests. So the there board. isn't a lot of further deep diving with the, the roles that they're trying to serve in. Um, and, you know, uh, Russ has actually been an individual just as a member of the community that has attended regular to these meetings. Um, and Tom, like I said, showed a lot of interest in participating in it. Uh, he is um, helping get the RFPA for the North Harney off the ground. So, well, in many, many cases, very I might know who they are somewhat, but in some cases there have been appointments we've made where I don't know the individual. I don't know what they look like. I assume they're a good person. Their letter was very short. You know, uh, they're the only applicant, you know, so probably gonna approve them. Not gonna give them a hard time for stepping up. Be, be grateful, but nevertheless, I like that the old way. And it was before Commissioner Shellman was on. And yeah, I was on the say, court. I, I we used to do it differently, and it just it long. just hasn't yeah. been that way lately. I would prefer, and in, in I mean, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm terrible with names. You know, meet somebody three or four times before I remember their name, but I'll remember them by face. And I probably may have met these gentlemen and know who they are, really, but by name only. And and we're appointing representatives. To represent this body, and to and, advise and, and to provide to advice to this to this to this body. So I would like it myself. I I would like to have it more than just a piece of paper and then something that that we're looking at. I think in the in the future, if there's an agenda item, then those applicants, you know, be aware they're you know encouraged if they can to come to county court. They you know they don't absolutely have to be. We have your letter, but be a good opportunity when the county court is. Um, going to be making these appointments. Does the fair board also have specific um, seats with certain expertise areas? No, there's a, uh, within the body, they take different roles, but it's kind of decided amongst that body. The mm -hmm. NRAC, the way the bylaws were set up, they were each given specific roles. A specific chair, yes. a specific exactly. seat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I, I mean, it's one of those, uh, you know, it, when you look at the different uh, folks that are on item L, uh, each of them hold a specific seat, um, and there's actually a 
Excel spreadsheet that I have. That this is the beginning of, of us knowing. Good job, Commissioner Shellman. So of if what you would the like, terms I can let you know these. what these terms are for each of these individuals. Uh, so Keith Balzar is Ag Forest BLM. Uh, Tom Sharp will be Forest if on your approval. Bruce Rickman is Recreational and OHA. Cam Swisher is Range. Myrtle Reed is recreational and OHA stands for Oregon Hunters Association. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking. Of and Jesse Sekar, uh, who happens to chair this committee, is fire and range. Uh, Jeff uh, Maupin had been livestock producer. Uh, Nick Schott, ag and livestock. And then ag research center, which is comprised of Chad Boyd and David Bonehart, uh, is under all areas that they represent. What did you say Merle's position is? Uh, recreation and OHA. And I'm, you know, more than happy to shoot you an email with this actual. You can shoot it to the executive assistant once we have one. <laughs> which that the process is. Perry used helpful. to have this document in her deal. I kept it updated for her, but we don't have Carrie. So, so <laughs> um, for time being, then, um, and, and we can discuss this a little bit more too as well, but I just wanted the court to kind of well, understand and, my When I put something it. on the agenda as far as a letter of interest, if you would like them present, I would like you to just let me know. Uh, because when I put on the agenda, I didn't have any feedback that way to invite right. them to the court. No, well, yeah, we had no policy. Over time, point, so over time, time, time it just, just kind of changed. Future. And um, if we're going back, and I would just say any of our boards, when, when, we, uh, when we get some letters of, of interest and it's going to be on the agenda that you know we well, who are the liaison said, just I invite them. I usually scan sure they them and put them in this, and I didn't make it in this one. So okay, well I'm comfortable this time going ahead and approving uh, these appointments, um, and uh, I appreciate the fact that they are getting filled with good people, and I appreciate Commissioner Shellman uh, letting us know the different seats at the table. I would like official approval on L, just so it is in the record of what terms each of these individuals serve in. So I would like that to be made and, in a and I, I presume those terms are consistent with the bylaw. Yes, I don't. That, I don't that was remember from what the, the bylaws bylaw that they're three-year terms, and so this is um, just for our record, bringing them up to date for the public to be able to see. Well, I'll entertain a motion uh, accepting the resignation of Jeff Maupin and the appointment of Russ Clark and Tom Sharp. So moved. I'll second. Yeah. Motion has been made to, to accept the resignation of Jeff Maupin as the, um, he was a livestock producer. livestock producer from the Natural Resource Advisory Committee and the appointment of Russ Clark forestry from the term of 2022 to 2024 and Tom Sharp for livestock. 20... No, uh, Russ was livestock. I'm Tom sorry. Forestry. Tom Sharp forestry for 2023 to 2025 and Russ Clark for livestock producer, livestock producer 2022 to 2024. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Not hearing any. So moved. Motion carries. Um, and Lindsay? Um, I would like, just for the record, there be a motion to approve the committee members as presented with their terms. Uh, so I'll go ahead and make that. Uh, I move that the NRAC committee members, um, the Natural Resource Advisory Committee to the county court members, uh, be Jesse Sakart, Nick Schott, Chad Boyd, and Dave Bonart, and Russ Clark for 2022-24, and Keith Belzar, Merle Reed, Bruce Rickman, and Cam Swisher, and Tom Sharp for 2023 through 2025 for the record. A second. Um, so in, in that uh, motion, though, I would, uh, I would have liked to have seen, though, the terms for each one of them. I think, are they January through December terms? Like your yeah, year January terms? is when we're supposed to update them. And that's so if it's those, hadn't been updated. Here we are, February. So if it's, um, for instance, the Russ Clark 2022 through 2024, that means, of course, he's coming 
with a resignation he's mm -hmm. filling. Yeah, that he's means the whole year, 22, filling. 23, and 24, those three years. That, so January but I mean, through all December. the other all the other members, no, not just them. They're, they're all January through December 31st. No, it's just three-year terms. They're three-year terms. They're three-year terms. 22, 23, 24. The state or three-year terms. I, but are they all on the same three years? Yes, like that's 22 what, to 20. The, the half are on one and half are on the other. Jesse cycle. through Russ are on the 22 through 24. That's why I put that in that right. line. And then Keith through Tom are on the 23 through 25. Oh, okay. So that's why okay. I broke them up into the three year terms that they okay. fulfill. Do you know if the bylaws say that they can be reappointed and if? There's any limit to how there many times? There is no limit built okay. into it. Fine. Thank you. It, they usually drift off after a while <laughs> of service. So. You can get tired. It has <laughs> natural attrition built. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. After that clarification, any further discussion? Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And hearing none, motion carries. So then now, uh, what was Lindsay? Have you heard from? Yes, um, I was going to mention it this morning, and then we got going. She is uh, ill this morning with the flu, <laughs> so hoping not to share it with us. She uh, said that she has contacted Susan about getting on the March agenda. We'll March be contacting first. you. She's going to send an email because she really wants to come and give an update about the two conferences that she attended and some. Um, ideas and suggestions from those conferences so she's asked to be rescheduled um sure so but looks forward to sharing that March 1st. conference and information with the court yeah there's lots of good bugs going around right now okay that takes us through new business and um there were no public water notices and again on that element um my intent is to explore uh, the placement of the web address and how people can pull that up on our new website. That'll drop yeah, off. having a link. Yeah, a link. Correct. And then that'll drop off the agenda. But until we do that, it's con it's continued to be on the agenda. But there are no notices for this week. Have we specifically asked uh, for to build that link in at this point? I don't recall. Uh, not yet. I haven't heard any. The last meeting we had, it was supposed to go live within a couple of weeks, and it's been three or four weeks now. So well, I, I thought know. we weren't going live until we we went roll out. Of the, uh, of the uh, Commissioner Doro, were you on that call, the website call that day? I, I was. Well, what's the question? And well, it was my understanding during that call that she was looking at going live like the follow two weekends from then, from that call. I thought we were originally waiting till March. For some reason, I was thinking March. Okay. I. I I'm not always 100% attentive during Zoom meetings, okay. but well, uh, I might have <laughs> missed that one. I might have misunderstood. I thought she was looking at going, but it was not the weekend following the call, but potentially. Did, did she mean go live for us to do a preview or did she mean live live? I, if so, well, I'm I, pretty sure it would it would have been March at least for live. Okay. live but I, yeah, I, I thought Jeremy had sent out an email. Um, he did on the. And that it was about both of them going. Okay. Oh, is that right? Live at the same. I guess time, from what I recall. So um, I am finishing my bio that she had requested from all of us. So I'm finishing that, and I will address that link, building that link in at the same time. Okay. That day I wrote mine. The reason I sent it to you guys is like, it you can put logs. You can put short. Sure. I'll yeah. just do it that way, and in case that helps you, I gave us a go by. And, uh, I just thought uh, it's hard. It's hard to do here that helps. <laughs> Thank you. Um, correspondence. I had no correspondence this week for this period. And scheduling future court, regular well, court dates. Well, did you guys get correspondence from Peter Skeen Ogden? Yeah. Just, you know, he's deceased from a long time ago. I and that address is just it with uh, Dad. The cemetery. He had already um, <laughs> recorded it. And yes. documented it as necessary. So, yes. It yeah. was just at that well, point. I thought, I, let me Google that address. Oh yeah. That must be where his headstone is or something. What what's the letter? So shouldn't that be legal to send something in somebody else's name that's dead to a governing body requesting things? <laughs> it's just cowardly. <laughs> Should be illegal. It was just a 
It wasn't a personal letter. It was a rant. I read it. Did you know? I don't think so. Can I see it real quick? Can you can remind me. <laughs> we get these occasionally. It's not from one of our constituents. Apparently. And I got one recently, and I don't oh, have okay. with me. No, and it's got signatures from three individuals from three different counties. I got that. Wasco, just basically saying, you know, it was a form letter um, on uh, the election the voting, voting system by stuff. Mail and the electronic counting. Right. Systems. And there is litigation in general that's that's happening with state of Oregon and different people in different organizations. And I believe it might have been part of that. But at any rate, I did receive it and I did. I put it in a folder after I read them if there's no action for me to take. Same here. And Same. I discussed it with the clerk and um, Dominic. Is that something, though, that um, you know, coming back to the documenting of such, uh, you know, when we receive an email on that, you know, we don't necessarily put it on our county court agenda or anything. We Anything that's received as far as correspondence, clerk documents, but, um, you know, if the county's being brought into litigation, like what we saw in uh, the email this week. Uh, you know, where does that need to be flagged for the public? We don't, I mean. Uh, yeah, good question. I I mean. The only I, part of that that I wasn't sure about and why I didn't include it in this conversation was the uh, correspondence from our uh, county council, the yeah. very top of the email said confidential. Yeah. So I didn't uh, know the parameters of that and didn't. I don't throw any of the hard copy letters or, and back when we were receiving lots of emails around the Second Amendment stuff from folks both in and out of county, we got a whole bunch for a period of time there. I at first just started printing them three hole punch, stick them in the thing. I mean, I read them, but there was, uh, but I wasn't sure what my responsibility was to retain. Of course, it's in my email. They're all in my e my county email for, yeah. for recovery. Hard copy. So, I did ask the clerk about that as far as retention goes. And he said he advised that there is no requirement to retain them, but just out of practice to make a file, put it in it, and every 12 months delete the delete or get, throw away the items that are 12 months old. Oh, okay. That's right. That was his that would, that would be good. Uh, that's good for me to know. Um, I did notice that on the, the one I don't have with me, that was that one was a received stamp by our clerk's office, whereas this one was just handwritten addressed to me. Uh, I and, uh, Jack so had this one did mine. not stamp. This one wasn't okay. stamped. It was just in my inbox. And I, I was thinking it was going to be this wonderful but now that gratitude you letter of cemetery. thank you, you're doing a great job, but it wasn't. <laughs> it does exist. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard of it. <laughs> Any further correspondence? Uh, no, I just have some things when we do general interviews. Next topic scheduling regularly scheduled meetings March 1st, March 15th. April 15th, 1.30 a.m. April 5th. April 5th. Yeah. Sorry. March 15th, April 5th. Um, Judge, you've got a lot going on. You're going to be going to county college in addition to all the other stuff, budgets starting up. One of the things the county court has done for uh, at least six years is um, schedule at times for the county court to go out to some of our rural communities. And that's it doesn't have to be done by a certain time. We, we like to get out there at least once a year to, to some of them. So there's make you aware of that. Um, and when we do, that's when we're looking at our schedules, looking at what might work for them. And it's it's never perfect. Sometimes we, we get a, a good turnout and sometimes it, not too much. But um, I didn't know if that's something you all going to want to continue or. Uh, I attended some of those before taking that's office. True. And um, yes, I would like to I would like to continue to provide that opportunity for rural residents to speak with us and air any concerns or whatever. Okay. Um, so we have, was there one conducted in the Riley area in the past? Yeah, we have in the past, no but last year, no <laughs> we didn't do any this past fall. Usually we do some in the spring and some in the fall. And we, you know, do like three and two or three and three just depends on, on who we're trying to cover. We usually alternate 
each year, whether we do French Flint or Diamond, and then those folks can you know, go drive to the other ones. Close enough proximity. But um, nothing what we had none this fall. Okay. So that would be Riley, Crane, Druzy, Diamond, French Glen, and Fields. Five. I'm trying to think if there's any others. I think five. Yeah, I think we did three and two. So about every two to three months, try and schedule one if you want to keep them spaced out evenly. I mean, there's no rush I right now. So kind of you think? Between April and May, done some, and then in the fall, done the others. It's, it's, but we can do it. We try anyway. to hit the rhythm of, of ag, but in school and stuff. And it's, it's Which I think is something, you know, really our new administrative assistant, when that takes place, could help us um, make some calls to folks in that area and see, uh, you know, timing wise, uh, and then maybe come back and propose something date wise yeah. to us, yeah. even with some community outreach from that position. It's always good when when there there is a turnout because we learn so much we get to know them a little bit they appreciate it very much and they learn from us and it's more of like a conversation you know around topics and um we usually have a really good turnout when we go to fields and we have had good turnout uh at diamond at times and originally we had good turnout at Bruzy, but then after that they always say oh i'm sorry i couldn't make it and we just had stuff going on and, um we haven't had a lot of turnout at Riley. I don't know if we should ever change, see if we want to have it at, in the archery store. I don't know. I mean, just something different that maybe. Wherever the community focal point would be yeah. best for people to get to. But, well, we were having it at the school, but there was just no interest. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the first year we did it, they there was probably about six people there um, mm -hmm. so before you were on the court you know Jeff Motlin was one of them there, there were people so had at that point and they've since moved from the area uh that lived out there that were very active thanks Greg uh, no was no, his name Greg not Greg uh, Midge Smith and her husband yes. what was uh, his name I guess I'm, I'm, going. I'm embarrassed all right but yeah they the, they the Moffins and there were a few others but they were last they couple were good times, at helping build that momentum for Right. And there isn't necessarily that dynamic personality. Yeah. Right. And then Crane, we it's we've had good and nobody. We've had both. Just depends. Sometimes we've just told so, the school. So, <laughs> yeah. so yes, I I would like to continue myself, continue those opportunities. Well, we'll leave it just on your radar to sure. think about and I'll just remind you if it's like half the year's gone by and we haven't done one. But um maybe. We'll see what the weather tends to be like next month, but I don't have a, a county college mm -hmm. uh, date session for next month. It picks back up again April, May, and June, um, which those seem to me like they're falling right on a court week because right. I, I take off tomorrow. Actually, um, if we're done with that, if we... Um, I actually have one uh, addition to that. Uh, so... Jamie McCormick from the BLM uh, has reached out and would like to hold a Taylor grazing meeting uh, where we discuss allocation of those funds. I propose that uh, March 1st at two o'clock, we could schedule that meeting and that would give us two weeks to reach out to the public for any interest in attending that meeting. Um, we have had folks kind of serve on that, but it's been a fairly informal uh, situation and I know that uh, the previous folks that had been serving uh, some of them are no longer ranching at the same March 1st, place you said? March 1st at 2, two. so it would be after our county court meeting I knew we'd already um, be here but um, March 16th with SEAC and we're hosting yeah what time of day it's um, 10 o'clock I think or 11 It'll be three hours. Will it be in the courthouse or somewhere else? Um, I assume the last time it was here in the courthouse. Yeah, and they all seemed to know exactly where they were going. Yeah, I don't know. They hadn't reached out to me. I knew they were coming here, but I, they hadn't reached out to me as far as facility goes. You know, I'll tell you, one of my first experiences as a commissioner, I was really new. And I apparently there was a SEAC meeting here. I was never signed to the SEAC. And uh, the county judge <clears throat> called me and said, oh, I forgot there was this meeting. So I 
rushed and got Jeremy, the IT guy. And I mean, it was poorly attended and poorly supported because we didn't think about it. I mean, I, that's the only one I've attended, you actually. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know it was a thing. And I luckily, will. Jeremy stayed late. And we got a connection. And we probably have three people in the room and then somebody on. I will reach out to the ODOT representative on that and find out if they already have a, a location secured. And uh, thank yeah. you. I would hate to have been caught the day of. and Everybody shows up. <laughs> yeah. and the last time I had it here, it sort of felt like that. Um, I will be glad to have pizzas delivered. I mean, they have five pieces of something there for 20 people. <laughs> and they, these people drive from all over. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was I was excited about when they uh, indicated that it was going to be here in March, but nobody reached out to me for, for location or anything. I just figured they already had that arranged with a facility here in town, but I will make sure. Yeah. Just never assume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's where it was I've never before. <laughs> said meeting, so for years. And if if everybody is good, in fact, I think you were one of the few people that were there at that meeting. Barb, I told Jamie that I would bring it up at this meeting and just make sure that that works with the clerk's schedule. I'm available. So do we need to um, advertise? It? Do we need to advertise that? Mm -hmm. And I thought I'd try to get on the radio. Um, and make a plug for it too. And it, you know, it's it's one of those people that have interest in it have interest and just don't go, which is fine. But um, it, we it's need been, it's it, been so. out at BLM usually. Is that where she's? Uh, we've been having it here. Oh, you have? Yeah. Last the first three years I went to it, the annual. Yeah, yeah. and then Taylor COVID, crazy. Then COVID hit, and they couldn't meet out there any okay. further okay. due to their restrictions. So since then, we have been having it in our chamber. But how many does it, does it usually attend? Uh, Jeff and Jamie, and we invited two members of the public to kind of serve with us on that. So it well, was a small body. Uh, the, so the last yes. one I went to had, the first one I went to had just a few. And then the second one I went to, when it was still out at BLM before COVID, had a lot of their staff in the room. And a lot of BLM staff? Mm -hmm. And um you know, a few of the ranchers and county court, and it was a, a way longer meeting than the first so one. So is this in reference to the funds that we get from the mm -hmm. projects that we're going to use it for? Uh, the projects that we approve that they bring to us for expenditure. It was, a you know, an act of Congress that yeah. created it. And we're one of the few counties that apparently really still tries still. to hold it true to its intent, which is to be projects that enhance the grazing, you know, productivity yeah, know and et cetera. Nevada, where I previously lived, they got the funds, um, but they didn't, they didn't, that I saw, I didn't use them for projects for, for um, on the ground doing. projects. Uh, we're one of the few bodies that still try to do that. Uh, we have been using some of those funds, though, in the last year to help support um, our uh, predator control. And so I, I, you know, that's a totally valid use of said funds, um, you know, so that we didn't have to dig into other places in the budget. And I, I would still, you know, I'll bring that up at that meeting, but still recommend that some of those funds be used for. And, and if that if that's a public meeting, you know, you may want to reach out to our predator control guy. Yeah. And right. have him there and, you know, just for full, full conversation. Um, but so if that date we, and time is acceptable, yeah. I'll let Jamie know. She can let her folks know. I think it, I think, you know, we're all, we're all here because it's a county court day. So it's just easier if we're here that day. To get us together for that part of it, anyway, as long as it's as long as it works for everybody else, it would be an attendance. Was her schedule at this point, she said. I, I'm good with it. And will we need minutes? Who's the convener of that meeting? We are. So I don't know if they've ever had minutes. That would be well, if it's, I if it's something public, to admit. It public, seems like we, seems like it ought. Yeah, if it's public and we have to publish it and advertise it, then I would say we have to agendize it. And yeah, I don't think he's still so. that would be something good to do. Um, which meeting? 
March, first March at first, two. <laughs> two yeah. yeah. Um, any other schedule? Not scheduled for schedules. Um, so for general, general deliberation, then um, I start off letting just updating the court that uh, the search for an executive assistant is underway. It actually closes today. The announcement does. We have about eight, as of yesterday, eight applications, some very good applications. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting in the process. Um, I'm excited about it. So who do you intend to have or ha what kind of an interview uh, panel will you be? Uh, my intended process is an initial interview and then the top two or three, depending on what we decide to interview, if we, you know, how many we interview, but the top two or three then referred to a second interview with myself and potentially another individual. But I'd it, like to be on that. Okay. Well, I was going to ask if you'd be on the first one. Oh, that'd be fine. On the first I'd, one. I'd just like to be uh, I didn't somewhere I'd on the process. Keep us split up between the two processes and That'd that way good. we have different objectiveness going on there. Good. I'm trying to um, look at people for the panel that uh, while while having local representation, i.e. the court, but also representation from maybe another department in the county, and then maybe even a, a member of non-county staff. External person. Um, to keep it as objective as possible and looking be, for the right person. Fine. So that, that is um, moving along. We should have uh, talking with uh, HR, uh, Ms. Atwell. It'll probably be the end of the month before we get around to doing interviews though because of payroll obligations that she has and other, other obligations that we both have over that time to be able to get things to come together for the initial interview. So it's looking like it's probably gonna be the end of February before we actually do the first round of interviews. How do you feel about that, Susan? <laughs> you're did, did you you're say filling no in uh, extremely happy? well, but I know that's a <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, You've done a great job. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, I take off. I'm supposed to take off tomorrow morning to go to Salem for uh, session two of uh, County College, AOC County College. But in conversation with uh, Judge Rascio just before this, there is a, a meeting tomorrow morning that I might want to attend in regards to funding for our Justice Center. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, as soon as we're done here, I need to go see if I can extend my reservation one night, one night early, and um, hit the road this afternoon. That would be timely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. all I've got really for general general discussion. I appreciate you uh, trying to get over for that. Thank you. Well, it's our, I, I view it as probably our biggest internal intergovernmental oh. issue right now, the yes. jail and the justice center. It's, it's the biggest issue. Um, on that note too, uh, phase two funding for uh, the hazard material cleanup, uh, the grant, there was some elements in there that had to be clarified uh, for eligibility determination before it could even go on to ranking or, or selection and ranking. And we got that tough stuff taken care of last Friday afternoon. It's done, it's in, so now it's moving on to the next process. Um, there's some other issues still that have that would need to be addressed on the previous um, uh, grant. And there are still funds available, I was told too. There's still funds available in that grant of about ballpark $82,000. Um, so, so I'm gonna have some more discussion with DEQ and EPA uh, representatives on um, any other assessments that we might wanna have done here in Harney County, uh, which could lay the foundation for future work on other facilities. Was, was our economic development office in the past, to the best of your knowledge, helping the county judge manage that effort, or I, what? I believe they were. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, legislative session season right now. I've had a hard time catching up with Mr. Smith. Uh, actually, he was supposed to call me today, and he's probably tried while we've been in here. Um, but uh, 
but yeah, I kind of need to get in touch with them and, and find out if they can provide me some doc copies of documents because I think they did handle the very first portion of well, that. I remember process. that um, the local uh, person, Denise, was one who was in the know about that stuff and, and had some some role. I don't, I'm not sure what it was, though. Um, I wasn't involved in that, but um, I just... I've obtained a lot of the documentation from the phase one assessment. Uh, there might be still a few documents out there that I'm trying to track down uh, so that we have everything together and know what was submitted and, and everything. So uh, I think they may have them, or at least that's my next stop. If not, then I'll have to make a request to EPA or um, the EPA, the Brownfield grant and get anything that we might be missing. They've been super helpful on this last issue, this last week, super helpful. They, to be quite honest, they pretty much walked me right through exactly what we needed to do and it's done. So, so I look forward to working with them some more in the future as far as this next round, this next grant. Um, so that's kind of what I, the only thing I can update on the Justice Center. And, Hopefully, I, maybe I can catch that meeting tomorrow morning and have some more information come back. That'd be us. great if you can catch that meeting. I'm sure just being hearing it firsthand, being part of that would be awesome. I did provide testimony on that bill for the county. Which bill? I think it was, uh, was it 2497? Okay, and I, like I, did, I think I did written. To conduct assessments? Yeah, I, I provided written and she did. And uh, I provided Zoom written as well. Person. Yeah. We wanted to make sure to make a plug. <laughs> the one you uh, pointed me to that I might want to make testimony. I was the only one who put a written testimony in, and it was rather general, but I still went uh, that out. I think that they need to realize that these are issues that have been brought up a lot of times. I can't believe they still have to call. <laughs> um, are you ready for me yet? Yes, go ahead. Please. Okay. So, um, uh, one of the things that I let you all know uh, is it as part of trying to get some good living wage jobs in Harney County. The thought is to see if any of the state agencies would like to go ahead and locate some of their jobs, full-time jobs here in Harney County. Um, 10 would be great, five would be better than nothing. Um, can that be done? So I touched base with Senator Finley, Rep Owens, and just said that's something that we would be all for. Um, it would provide good living wage jobs. It not where someone from out of area could telecommute under that job and not be here. Someone who lives here, and uh, if they can start working on that, that would be great. And I said I'm not trying to blackball any particular agency, but it'd be kind of nice if it if it might not be DHS or OHA jobs, maybe something else. Uh, we already have some of those, and and maybe don't want. No, but and and so Diversify. so um, I let our legislators know. I had talked with Greg Smith with his hat as being our economic development coordinator. He said he would see how they come to him when he's got his legislator hat on, and they would all work on that. So with, there was going to be a phone call on that with the directors of Department of Revenue and, and Department of Administrative Services that got canceled at last minute due to the schedules of the legislators. But that's a conversation. Don't know where we'll go. Uh, I. I'm glad that there might be some conversations. Um, and then, of course, I'll keep you informed and we can all be part of it once we know more. Um, broadband, uh, you've probably gotten some of those emails now about the levels of the uh, Federal Communication Commission, FCC, wanting certain data things done by states before state funding comes. Oregon, state of Oregon wants to maximize the accuracy of the information to maximize the amount of funding that they believe the state should be eligible for. So all this stuff is coming fast and furious. And I reached out to Feather at Business Oregon. And, you know, I said, I'm reading this email. Sentence one says, find out if your county has done this or this you know, related to licensing mm -hmm. the fiber. I said, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know that my county judge will know the answer to that. I don't know. I said, do you know the answer to that? Where should I go to get the answer to that? You know, and she said, I don't know. She said, it's crazy. So today at 11, there was a, a virtual 
meeting that we couldn't attend due to county court, as you know, and I had requested that it be recorded so we can play it back and listen to it. And she said it will be, and she will let me know. It might be next week, but it'll be available. And also I asked Susan Christensen of GEODC if she might want to listen in for us and also kind of back brief me and she said she would. So I don't know if it's just a general, here's some broad information everybody should be aware of or if it got into more conversations. But if I happen to get the link to the recording, I will definitely send it to you both because three heads are better than one on some of this stuff. And uh, I know you have all the time in the world to watch some more recordings. Um, but regarding the concept we had about po possibly regionalizing for a broadband action team services, et cetera. So I've continued to have good conversations with Malheur County and I've had my first conversation with Wheeler County. And the reason to have it with Wheeler County are interesting, but um, they Wheeler County has a, total, has a different situation from us, but they aren't in a broadband action team and they still have stuff to be done in their county that's different than Harney and Malheur counties. Malheur County, uh, judge said, well, you know, we, we do want to partner with you. He said, we actually have fiber to some of our remote areas where you don't, but that doesn't mean we don't want to partner with you. And I said, you know, what we think today is what we think we're going to head toward could totally change in a year or two. I mean, there's more to come. And he said, no, we'd like to partner with you. We like, we like to help each other out and be together on stuff that's a little bit uh, more than what we can have on our plate alone. So he, so that's sounding good. And he said he's all for me reaching out to Wheeler County. So I reached out, talked to Judge Lynn Morley in uh, Wheeler County and great conversation. He, he said, fine. They had gotten $2 million a few years ago to run fiber to fossil. And they only have 1600 people in their county. And their county is a lot smaller than our county geographically, but they have some very challenging terrain where there might be three, four houses, and there's no way line of sight could do anything nor run the cable. They have their challenges too, but they have some employer stuff, uh, big company providing lots of fusion of money into their county as compared to us. Um, but he's really down to earth. And he said, no, that'd be great. Just, you know, keep me informed. And we probably should be part of a bat. He said, we're still going to need to do stuff. He said, we have some, he said, you know what we did? He, I mean, I'm learning from him. He said, we we did some solar repeaters at $30,000 a whack, but now you can get some for $10,000. And we're just, he said, we're doing some of our own hybrid stuff. And I said, well, our solutions are going to end up being hybrid, so to speak. So with that in mind, meaning our three counties are going to have to do a little different than Lane County, you know, or whoever. So they're all for that. Um, and so I asked Susan Christensen, I said, look, I said, if you, since we are three of your counties, you have many counties but it, uh, that you service, but if, if you want to put your thoughts together on some steps that from what you can find out that you recommend on how we go ahead and, and start to regionalize, start to get some funds right off the bat to support everything we do starting now, I'd appreciate that. She's going to try to send that to me next week. So stuff, the conversations are good. Do I have a next step for us today to do? No, I'm going to update my white paper, if you will, to add in stuff I know now, kind of make that a living document, version two, version, you know. But I wanted to see uh, at this point what your reaction is to Wheeler County. I don't know Wheeler County very well myself. So my first question, or well, let me make a, a caveat, a statement first. Obviously, it's about getting the service, the broadband service to, to our community so that people have access to the internet and whatnot. And, that, and that's, that's really the biggest portion of the priority. But is there anything uh, that has been in legislation mandating that that, um, that the counties and communities have to get, and is there a timeline associated uh, with it if there is? I don't know if the state has its own mandate that they've told the feds they would do or that they just at the state legislature have decided or the governor or anybody. I don't know that. That's a good question. We uh, haven't had anything come down to us saying you are required to provide at least 25-3 internet high speed to all your 
residential communities, no matter how remote, and you have until 26, 2026 to no, nothing. So while while the the entities at BEFCC or the federal government, whichever entity that might be, has identified or or defined high speed internet as two hundred megabytes per second down and thirty up, something like that. I believe it is. But those, you know, you're talking science fiction here. Yeah. So <laughs> so so where I'm my going, house. Where I'm going with that though is that is that I definitely think it's going to be a hybrid. And those numbers, until technology catches up with with the demand, are not going to be reasonable. So it's it's a matter of how do we get some form of hybrid broadband service to our residents of Harney County, and and, mm -hmm. and in doing that, it, if we have to be a part of a bat in order to get funding, and Wheeler County really doesn't have anybody else to partner with then I'm fine with them coming on with ours. In a way, in talking to those two county judges, they were almost like, they didn't say it this way, but it almost felt like, oh yeah, no, we'll part you, with you, we'll support you. You guys might need to have more attention than us at first, you know, or or, or in total, you know, that who knows? Out here, county? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, they were like, let's help each other out. Looks like the bats are the, are the vehicle and the pre, the, the analysis, the, the broadband uh, study we had done a few years ago was not adequate. So um, it's something, it's something to glean some information from, but it would need to be, it would need to, any decisions to, for the bat once formed to figure out it needs to do some analysis. It needs to be updated, recommended. Will, that will be where the money, we're gonna want the grants for that, um, for sure. And, um, but, I think with GEODC, what I asked them is I said, all these applications, all these things, I said, you know, frankly, I'm already feeling overwhelmed and I haven't even begun. Uh, and I said, I can't even imagine. Um, I said, so what can you do for us? You know, and and she said, well, actually, I think that by having these mul multiple jurisdictions under application and with her, she's she's connected to, to this stuff and how it's rolling. Um, she thinks it would be a good um, role for GEODC. And I said, well, write something up and tell me, don't hold anything back on if, I mean, don't assume I assume if this is going to cost money or not or what, you know, write it down. So she's going to work on something. But um, anyway, that's the latest, more to come. Let's see. A couple of years ago, one of the reasons that Malheur uh, County might um, be ahead of us by far is that there was kind of a crisis on the border in terms of uh, Ontario feeling like they were going to lose businesses if they didn't upgrade their internet. So they were in a panic mode there for a while, and I don't know what the current status is. But the other thing is, if we could have gotten Representative Marcia, she um, is uh, was really the push behind um, broadband to schools. And yes, so uh, we we may her. we may from hear from her, and I will definitely uh, touch base with her. Thank you. She was had yeah couldn't come. Uh, there was anything else? Oh, I wanted to ask questions about the Crane Water District formation stuff, or is that going to be on the agenda at some point? Uh, our planning department still reviewing some of okay. the mapping. Okay. Um, okay. I, I yeah. talked to Brandon yesterday. He said he would visit it also. Um, and I'll ask him to send back the two discrepancies um, on the mapping that he found and have them send us a new map that put those in line with where we have current zoning. And then I didn't want zoning outside of those boundaries to pick this off. We need to not have to do any zone changes. So is that in reference to the uh, rural small small communities uh, uh, zone or whatever yeah. it's called? Um, there, he said that there was two properties within the mapping that fell outside of that, and he felt like they needed to adjust back to a zoning that is already in place, and that if you know further zone changes 
need to take place in time, they need to go address that, but that's not something we should be fiddling with at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, so that that has been a topic in communication with the uh, county council this week. And um, and just so you know, uh, Dominic and I have Zoomed with these other parties that are in the email chain prior right. getting the, to this point. Um, so the, the next step would be to uh, a resolution on the agenda and then setting and then with not more than 30 days or not less than 30 days, not more than 50 days following that, you have to hold the hearing on it. So um, another concern was when it's all said and done, board members for the district can be appointed if it's uh, if it's before a, a regular election cycle. But then the positions would actually have to come up on that next regular cycle, which would be August for this for this time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and I discussed that with Clerk Clerk Robinson. Mm -hmm. I saw his email. So, um, yeah, I didn't I didn't push to try to get it on this agenda this week. I didn't know how it was a little bit more conversation. No, uh, the planning department needed to finish some review. I know GIS looked at it and they had just some minor changes that they. Brought to them as well. So tentatively, it's in motion, but yeah. it's not it's not ready to put on the agenda okay. as of yet. No problem. Tentatively, it could be on the next agenda, March first, and then it would be an April fifth hearing for it. Be nice if it has an if, established if, process. We've just never this body's never been through it before, and so we, you know, looking for some guidance initially. Will there be a lot of public? town hall or anything to introduce well that was another thing the initial one that kicks the process off is the resolution that we would do march 1st and then the hearing itself um and again I, we can discuss it later on after it's actually been agendized and, and we do the resolution but for the hearing itself because it does it does affect yeah. crane that we have yeah. hearings in crane and maybe maybe how to have our actual rural county court in Crane. Is that the type where the your property taxes will include a charge for that district? They won't. If their resident falls within a certain... There will be no tax on it, so they don't have to vote on that. They just... Uh, the uh, community just has to vote on the board members because there is no tax associated with it. It'll just be through service fees, connection fees, and service fees. So there will be no... my understanding. No military now. participation... It's is there any way that that ends up after a number of years where the county ends up putting the bill? That question has been raised as well, too. Because that happens so without, often in life, you know. Without a tax associated to it, how, how does it get funded and maintained over the years? Because so, they're not incorporated, since Crane's not incorporated. Right. Now, there's right. some nuances to help this community to achieve this, and I think... Um, you know, we're just in the beginning yeah. phase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good. And you know, I've talked to Rep Owens about it too. He was the one that kind of initiated trying to help with this process, and um, there's still some work, even with OWRD, um, with the well itself that has to be done. So it's <laughs> it's going to be a multi-step process, and so um, I don't see it moving any faster with this body than. Uh, some of the other moving parts to it and so we'll kind of just okay. keep working on the areas no, that yeah. are knowns and then well i'm not trying to push it too up. fast i no. just didn't know so no, it was that right. was correspondence it's from just good week. for everybody to be able to see and know where we are at this stage um, that was correspondence in an email format this week but i didn't i didn't mention it because of the there's so many questions left to ask yeah, to, to find out we that's why i didn't mention updated it. map that would be ready um, the NRAC was held on the 7th, I believe. Um, and we had Amy Patrick from Oregon Hunters Association zoom into that meeting. Uh, we're working with her on a legislative concept that addresses the wildlife management objectives that affect this region, um, where we have a lot of ungulates that are falling below 50% of that objective. 
Um, and so we're looking at trying to uh, develop a legislative concept that helps address that and find specific funds that would be requested in order to help those populations recover. Um, so it's something that representative a town, I think. Owens <laughs> <laughs> uh, brought up that he would like some help with. And so um, a subcommittee was formed from the NRAC and they put together a document and then she and I have been kind of working that forward and working with um, our local biologist, we foster as well as some folks at the state level in developing some language. We hope to have it into them either today or tomorrow for a legislative concept because the deadline is the 19th. Is there any way yet you could anticipate whether it will be neutrally or favorably received or rather if it will I just- I think that the way that we're um, putting it forward, hopefully it will be more neutral. Unless they really do want our dear populations to go into non existence and big horn sheep and stuff like that. <laughs> I think Klamath counties have having issues too. Yeah, and it's, we're, we're not building it specific to Harney County or this region. We're building it as a tool to be used to do some by the Fish and management. Wildlife Department. So when any management objectives for wildlife fall below this, that it can be an avenue to help address those. And so we're not trying to make it specific just to you help mean, us. I mean, not one size fits all. It's not one size fits Ooh. all. We're trying to create a tool um, with some funding to allow for contract services to really aid us or something. That sounds so, good. Yeah, that's time consumer. But uh, I also uh, testified on Senate Bill 199, which was trying to get predatory authority to be Oregon Fish and Wildlife Commission. Um, there was a good turnout from other commissioners that also testified in opposition to that bill. Um, we'll see if it makes it out of the Senate. If not, it will be heard in the House side under Representative Owens's uh, committee. And it's um, got a lot of problems. It potentially isn't even a legal uh, bill as I've had Dominic review it. <laughs> so we will um, continue to work on that. Um, because it's very concerning for our area. What's, yeah. what's OBA the OBA was uh, having to divide authorities for predators. What was the main, what's their main argument to do it? Um, it is an avenue for some of these conservation groups to be able to give the commission authority to uh, not have to deal with anybody else if they want to um, ban coyote contests or if they want to get the beaver off the predator list. It's a, um, a way okay. for them to I just throw I mean, in that direction. I kind of knew that, but I didn't know that that's what they say. Is, is that what they say the good reason to do it is? I mean, I, and people think that's a good reason? A lot of people it's very unfair. The opposition of it, there was a lot of good opposition. There was Were the testifying support. for it impressive or? No. or okay, good. Well, so we'll, we'll see we'll where see. that lands, but we're actively working to oppose that. So I've, I've been doing a lot of stuff on the legislative level as of yet, so. And I uh, wanted to say thank you for your efforts there, both of you, in your testimony, Christian, written yeah. and, and, and uh, verbal. Uh, I've heard your names mentioned on different uh, forums that you've testified or whatever, so you thank you for- have to work with your peers to try yeah. to- Thank you for representing Harvard County in those forums, so. And you know, Eastern Oregon County Association does a good job of now reviewing which ones, you know, and circling the wagons to get people. And I, I've got some emails uh, from Katie Balser is just, I guess, just being a cattle woman or, or other lists I'm on. Have you gotten some of those where she's updating her list of people, Harney County people on which bills need yeah, some attention? I think the and what cattle not. women's is tracking some stuff too. So um, that's, that's good. To, good I also to testified on the, the fairgrounds funding, um, trying to get the 1% cap uh, raised and so that was um, House Bill twenty five ten. One percent cap on. So right now they um, one at one point five million they cap us, and so the language states that we could get one percent of the lottery funds oh. allocated towards fairgrounds funding, and so we're working on trying to be able through this bill to 
get sufficient funding for the fairgrounds because there's not a fairgrounds within the state that doesn't need a lot of improvement and um, updating and renovation. And so this is the vehicle that we're trying to use to get funding, not at the county level, but at the state level to help support that as they are also our emergency services right. That's... Uh, designated areas. And so we're working another bill also with some amendments that would speak to that. There was a dash one amendment to the 2510 bill, but we are in opposition to that amendment that was to allocate 20% of whatever the bill would get to the racing commission. Hmm. And so that was not supported and we don't believe it'll move forward with the dash one amendment. Um, any, um, and I know that our last meeting was like right after or maybe right before the previous fair board meeting for the month. Any updates on fairground stuff? Yeah, um, and that's where I, you know, <laughs> if Lindsay was here, uh, I will give a brief update on that. So the fair board discussed uh, the RFP at the meeting. Uh, they've invited the one contractor that was moved forward to come do a site visit on Friday, just to make sure that he understands uh, the scope of the project and be able to work on that language uh, that was presented. Um, and then they will, you know, there, there was kind of two conversations going um, as everyone saw from what came back in, there was no local contractors that participated other than a landscape company um, in the project manager RFP that was put forward. Um, folks have reached out to some of the local contractors just to see if there was any um, specific issues with the RFP that- As to why they didn't participate. Uh, and they said they cannot get employees. And so, um, you know, that's always concerning just as we were talking about construction projects today. Uh, but that was why um, none of those local parties participated. They said, you know, even if it was to be put forward into a single project without a separate RFP for a project manager, that they just lack capacity at this time due to employees uh, being unavailable. And so, um, you know, that that in any level is concerning in this community that our local contractors don't have the depth of employees they need to do even to take on that scale of a project. Um, so there's nothing that's been uh, formally decided with the RFP. They wanted to have this opportunity to meet with this gentleman and then they'll um, hold another public meeting to discuss that work session and then decide um, whether um, it should be more moved forward as a project manager versus just a project scale so they're RFP. they're planning a public meeting work session or they're having a work session they're going to have a work session that Lindsay's working on getting onto the calendar it was discussed at the fair board meeting to the public that there would be a work session held uh, with the contractor that was moved forward in the rfp process it's in motion so part um, of the learning process and uh, knowing what questions to ask as part of that, and we've talked about it in a couple of different topics today, on the um, publicizing and requirement for agendizing and minutes and everything, um, I'm still looking at, and I had a conversation with Town Cloud on um, format, basically on their website for format to, to be able to put all of our minutes and meetings and and agendas in one location to make it easy for the easier for the public to find and locate them instead of having to go to two three two or three different websites for it. Um, and do you have a cost estimate for making like that? Mm -hmm. Well, right now we could do it right now the way it is. Um, if you look in Town Cloud, it's got it's got um, Harney County Court, and if you scroll down a ways, there's Harney County Budget Board. So it's just mixed in. They would be mixed in with the string, just just the way it is right now. It would just be, you know, um, you go. I didn't know if, uh, with our current contract, if those were the only two that we built in with them with the contract. So here, as you can see, um, County, Harney County Court meeting. Patty? 
I don't know. I know exactly what you're asking, but I don't know the answer. Cost, there wouldn't be any more cost. Okay. There wouldn't be. For what we have right now, there wouldn't be any more cost. There is an option for a website, a, a public facing website, wherein it would categorize the um, the different meetings, whether it was uh, fair board, NRAC, county court, budget yeah, board. Kind of like that. So it so it kind of uh, categorized them in that way, and that's ninety nine dollars a month for that website service. But it's public face. It's a public facing portion of this. Is all it is. We would still enter all of our stuff here, um, and then it would it would pull the top three. Did they show us a demo? Yeah, I have um because like right now it's the county Harney County Court meetings and the Harney County budget meetings that are on this. And I know there have been times when I've I've, I've been reading them like, oh wait, that's a budget meeting. I'm looking for a county court. Here meeting. is here is a, a demo of it actually. So so this is a and I have for, a one o'clock uh, Zoom meeting I've got to go to. Um, okay. So I might leave. So so this is City of Springfield, and I don't know if this is actual or if this is just a made up one, but you have latest news, so you can put bulletins. You know, you can help. Uh, we can. But it, would this be different and, than the our website? I mean, I'd hate to have multiple websites yeah, for the public. It, it is, but it. what this, but we could do one of two things. This would either put a link on our website that would take people directly to this, or there's another process that I need to talk to our website designer, uh, wherein, I know it's IT language, uh, API, and I don't know what that, I don't know what that means, but the <laughs> but town cloud said that if they, our website could actually get the API information and import the information from town cloud right onto our website. So it would be part of our website. So there's two ways of doing that. Yeah, I would, I would rather keep it with our website just so that folks aren't in the, but see how this one is um, regular city council meeting, board of, uh, of adjustment, P and Z meeting. So all the different types of, <laughs> all the different, uh, Types of meetings that have to be agendized and minutes, it's segregated. It's what uh, broken down, right? But we can do it. We could still do it even with our current town cloud for the cost that we're paying. Then there'd be no no more cost. But it would be, be intermingled with our county. Yes. Or I have to think about that one. Yeah. So so anyway, I, I'll leave. I'll leave it with that, but I just wanted to do want to consolidate somehow or another our our minutes and agendas. Yeah. And once we get the executive assistant hired, that person would just be a focal point for that information to come to, and then that yeah. person would manage it. Up to yeah, just do. Yeah, yeah cause that's not the battle awesome. is having um, an avenue to so get it up there. If there's no other conversation. Discussion? Not till an hour from now. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I would we'll have to do a motion. It's just adjourn, right? Yeah. Just adjourn. Yeah. So then I'll call the Harney County Court uh, session adjourned at 1248 p.m. Mm -hmm. I've got a one to four out. One to three no, and a four o'clock. I, I should have answered and said, no, I don't think I have to. This is a good idea. I'm sorry. Yes. I... <laughs> I go to the machine and get something. Else. Thank you. Thank you. Workforce and Talent Development Board Executive Committee. You can check out the young people sign in. It is really helpful when you can get everybody to sign in. Yeah. Uh, Safe travels, Bill. Good luck with uh, having those conversations in Zoom. Yeah, I'm going to go see if I can get a hotel. <laughs> That's the battle. You could do it. You could go, go get you down the sidewalk someplace. <laughs> the crash at Mark's office.